Hello and welcome to biology class. We are studying topic Kingdom Animalia and in this topic basically we are dealing with classification of animal kingdom and animals are classified basically into phylums. We are dealing with characteristic of each phylum. So we are taking some example and try to understand characteristic of each phylum in details. So our today's phylum is phylum Echinodermata. Now when we consider this phylum, uh, this phylum is like include very beautiful animals and all the animals are basically aquatic and staying exclusively in seawater. They found in almost all the seas in, uh, in different parts of the world and they are always adding beauty of the different ocean in the world. So the most familiar member of this phylum and the most beautiful one is the starfish. Now this is a picture of very beautiful starfish called as royal starfish. Now royal starfish is my favorite starfish. It is having this perfect color combination is the first reason behind it. And secondly, uh, this is a little larger than the usual starfish. And uh, But unfortunately, we don't find this beautiful starfish in Indian Ocean. Th we found this particular starfish in Atlantic Ocean, means uh, the ocean of which is to the America, then uh, Brazil, West Indies. In that ocean, in uh, we find this starfish, not in India. Uh, but it is a beautiful starfish. Now next uh, next example of uh, Echinodermata is this animal called as a sea lily. Now these animals generally stay along with corals. So here if you see the downside there are all corals and above the means along with the coral the sea lily is uh, growing. Now sea lily is also having a beautiful color combination as well as a very beautiful appearance. Now uh, other animals also which are included in Echinodermata are beautiful like this. We will see some examples in later on. But let us try to understand few characteristics by taking these two examples first. Now first and very important characteristic of Echinodermata are, is that they are always and always marine. Okay? They do not stay in fresh water. They do not stay on land. Any animal do not stay on land. Any animal is not terrestrial. Every and each and every animal which is included in Echinodermata is marine animal. So this is a favorite question for examiners. They usually ask which phylum include exclusively marine organisms or marine animals. So Echinodermata should be the answer. Okay. Now the next thing, next characteristic. So first characteristic is its habitat. Second characteristic of Echinodermata. Why the name Echinodermata? Okay. Now see. When I consider Echinos, the meaning of Echinos is spiny or spine. Okay? And Dharma means skin. What do you mean by Dharma? Skin. So simply speaking, these are animals with spiny skin. The animals with spiny skin. Now from where this spiny skin come from? Okay. So when we see starfish, when we touch it, it is always a rough. It is always rough texture. See, uh, sea lily, we can see it is rough. Okay, so all the other, even sea urchin is another example, which is also having spines on it. So all the animals which are included in Echinodermata are having spines on their body. Now these spines, this spiny body is basically due to the presence of ossicles. What? Due to the presence of ossicles. Now these ossicles are nothing but Plates, a bony plates, are basically made up of calcium carbonate. A plates made up of calcium carbonate. Okay, and these uh, plates made up of calcium carbonate spine, and it forms their exoskeleton. So the skin is spiny. Okay, exoskeleton skeleton is present outside the body, and it is made up of ossicles, which are made up of calcium carbonate. That's why they are having spiny skin. Okay, so second characteristic is clear. First habitat, second air appearance. Third characteristic, let us first consider few general characteristics and then we will try to understand some specific characteristic of Echinodermata. Now general characteristic is like they are having tube within tube body plan. Means digestive system is having how many openings? Two openings, mouth and 
anus. Now, when we see this starfish, okay, on the downside, on the land, uh, on this land side, it is having an oral, oral opening means mouth, and on the opposite side, dorsal side, it is having anus. Okay, so two different openings, tube within tube body plan. Now, next one is its symmetry. Symmetry is very specific. Now, what do you think? Which kind of symmetry it is showing? Radial symmetry. And this is a what kind of radial symmetry? Phi R this means pentamerous symmetry. Okay. There are uh, other uh, other starfish who show hexameral symmetry. Uh, tetramerous symmetry there are okay so we have already studied them in the symmetry so adults always show radial symmetry okay and on the other hand larval stages are bilaterally symmetrical so this is also specificity of echinodermata radial symmetry adults and bilateral symmetry larval stages okay now next uh, characteristic of echinodermata when we consider it is uh, there they are always triploblastic now, again the same question. Triploblastic means three germ layers. All three germ layers are present. Ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Okay. Uh, so, these are few general characteristics of echinodermata. Now, let us consider some more examples and we will go in the detailed characteristics of echinodermata. Basically, a specific characteristic which only echinodermata should. So, these are few other examples. Now, this is an example of sea cucumber. Uh, these are the animals, very, very common animals, which found everywhere in the ocean. In our Malvan Ocean also, there are several different sea cucumbers are found. Okay. And these are the, uh, these are the animals basically which are present at the, uh, at the bottom of the ocean, not a very deep ocean. Uh, but at the bottom and, and they are detritus means they are basically feeding on the organic material which basically fall onto the floor of the ocean. So they are not killing any other animal. They are basically feeding on the organic matter. But other, uh, other echinodermata like starfish, like this sea urchin, like all other echinodermata, they are basically carnivorous. Starfish basically go and capture capture its food and eat it. Like it, it may be eating other starfish. It may also eat, uh, you know, molluscans like bivalves, like other molluscans. Many starfish even eat corals. Okay, so uh, starfish is one of the reason why corals get destroyed. Okay, so there are uh, th this is its food habit, and this is about sea cucumber, and this is a sea urchin. Now, this is a picture of very beautiful sea urchin, but usually whatever sea urchin we see, it is black in color and having, it's like one circle and to it, there are several spines come out from it. So, this that is sea urchin, okay. In our seashore, in Malvan seashore, near the, uh, near the Sindhudurga fort, there are several sea urchin species, okay. So, these are about examples of Echinodermata. Now, let us go and study very specific characteristic of Echinodermata that is its water vascular system and now water vascular system is very well seen in this starfish easy to understand in this starfish so we will take this starfish example now this is a diagram showing water vascular system now what exactly it is try to understand now what name indicate that you try to understand first water vascular system now vascular system means circulatory system, circulatory system. So water work as a circulatory system or water is moving through, circulating throughout the body, okay, following a proper path, okay. Water is circulating throughout the body following a proper path. This thing is called as water vascular system. Okay. Now, as we know, starfish is basically staying on the seashore. Okay. It is benthoic habitat. It just stay at the bottom of the ocean. But in general, in intertidal zone means when where tide come up and go. So in that region, starfish is surviving. So whenever tide come, it get water, and that water basically 
enter into the starfish by this uh, by this uh, you know calcareous plate called as madreporite now madreporite is something like this okay it is a sieve like uh, sieve like uh, opening and it filter filter the sand and only water go out okay go <laughs> water it filter the sand and only water go inside okay once water go inside it get circulated in this ring canal can you see this circular canal around the mouth of the starfish okay so that is called as ring canal this blue colored okay so water enter through madreporite it will go into the ring canal and then it get distributed in each arm through this radial canals okay through this radial canal once water enter into the radial canal what happen is there are some structures on the side of the uh, side of each radial canal correct these structures they are they are called as a tube foot or tube fit basically these structures are called as tube fits so finally water go over here in the tube fits now what is the benefit of this system see i am revising once again before shifting to the benefit of the system see water enter enter through the madreporite once it enter through the madreporite it will go to the what does this called as blue color canal ring canal okay once it enter into the ring canal it will circulate it will enter into the each arm of the starfish through radial canal once it get entry into the radial canal then it will go to the tube foot okay so there are several tube fits okay and in that this uh, water will enter now why water is circulated so much okay now there are several reasons first of all food is transported through water vascular system okay digested food is transported to the through water vascular system then this water vascular system is having this particular part called as a tube fit okay this tube fits are basically help the animal to move basically what happen you know uh, these tube fits here we can see they are coming out whenever required it is depend on the will of the starfish if it want to take out uh, take them out or not so from the oral end they can come out and with the help of them starfish can walk okay so as name indicate tube fit they are the fit of the, they are the foot of the starfish and they are like a tube filled with water so once a tube is filled with water it can generate that hydraulic pressure with the help of that when all tube fits come out that time starfish just walk on it so they are uh, these are basically water vascular system is basically very important system when when it come to the marine habitat of the starfish understanding remember the path madreporite is one then ring canal then radial canal and tube fits understanding clear about it now it do circulation of food material circulation of gases uh, throwing out the waste material it help the animal to capture food it help the animal to run away so this is a life saving system for the starfish understanding even uh, sea urchin show the presence of water vascular system and then sea lily show the presence of water vascular system so many of them show the water vascular system clear about it and water vascular system is the speciality of echinodermata clear about it now let us go to it it is having even digestive system okay it is having um, mouth mouth as well as anus okay mouth on the ventral side anus on the dorsal side now next one is the it is having complete digestive system then a next thing is about its nervous system now nervous system of starfish is very well developed it is but it is a radial nervous system means it is not like uh, in other animals when we studied uh, studied uh, nervous system it was like one uh, one in the head region another in the uh, down posterior region now rings ganglion and etc but here the arrangement is different on the dorsal side on the ventral side one one ganglionated rings are present and they are connected radially through the 
in each arm understanding then a next uh, next important thing you need to know about starfish is about its circulatory system now water vascular system do lot of work of circulation so basically circulatory system is very much reduced it is you know it don't have much function to do so it is having uh, open type of circulatory system and heart are entirely absent there is no heart understanding so these are uh, like many characteristics we have discussed about echinodermata so just let us go and enlist those characteristics and even we will talk about its reproduction so the first characteristic of echinodermata is a spiny skin second one is organ system organization triploblastic radial symmetry and larval stages show bilateral symmetry true coelom then exclusively marine mostly benthoic then they may be solitary they can stay alone are gregarious means if they are staying in group it is not mandatory to stay in group some are sedentary like sea lily some are free living like starfish then next characteristic is about its water vascular system just now we have discussed about it and a locomotion is done with the help of tube feeds tube feeds are also called as podia remember tube feeds are also called as podia now this is a picture of tube feeds of a starfish see here you can see each tube feed which is coming out for the purpose of locomotion okay and it's that uh, see it is something like this it come out and down side it is having that ampulla understanding so it do not ampulla do not come out other parts come out in help in locomotion of the animal the next characteristic is exoskeleton calcareous ossicles then circulatory system open type of circulatory system heart is absent and this special type of circulatory system is called as hemal system now these are aminotelic animals excrete ammonia as a waste product and ammonia diffuses through gills now uh, nervous system is with two rings then next one is the respiration respiration takes place through gills okay and these gills are called as either branchi either papillae or either even the respiration can even done with tube feeds now next one is about its reproduction which is very important to remember now all starfish as well as other echinodermata are always unisexual means male separate animal female separate animal but both look same there is no sexual dimorphism remember this fertilization always external development always indirect they show presence of larval stages and larva become adult and this process by which larva larva get converted into adult this is called as metamorphosis now you have studied metamorphosis previously in frog metamorphosis okay so there also larva get converted into adult the process is metamorphosis so this is all about different characteristics of a kind of dermata in next video we will meet with next phylum till then take care goodbye